Hey, Alexandra. Hi, Michelle. It's so Hi. great to talk to you today. I love this movie so much. I I watched it, then I read the book, and then I watched it again. I may watch it a few more times. It's just fantastic. Nice. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm, I'm so happy you read the book as well. I mean, I think that you have the two kind of contrast put together. It makes for an even more impactful story. I think it's great. Now, what did you need to do for your audition? Oh, wow. So, you know what? My audition was was really kind of, um, I don't want to say, use the word simple, but I mean kind of, um, I guess, traditional when it comes to auditioning for film. But I, I was auditioning live with Sarah over Zoom because it was in the middle of COVID. But research-wise for this audition, um, like you should always be researching your roles and finding out if there's any history or go at what's going on so you can get the context, the tone and kind of a more edge on the story, especially if they don't deliver you a full script, which at this time I didn't have. So in my research, I realized, oh, this is coming from a true event story. It's inspired by true events. So I ended up watching hours of documentary footage when it came to that kind of thing. And then I realized, oh, it's a book as well. So I bought the book um, right away and I read it that same evening. Um, and I had a much better understanding of what this character was, where she was coming from, the intentions of the film. And uh, then I went in to do my audition with Sarah Pauly and I was really nervous um, because typically I'm a more of a, a comedic, comedic actor. That's kind of uh, where I get pinned. And so I, I, uh, this was a great opportunity for me to show my dramatic skills. And, um, also I, I think I was more nervous than usual because I knew this story was super important and I wanted to make sure I, I delivered my audition very respectfully to the material. And, um, it was kind of emotional in that sense as well, but, uh, whether I got the part or not, I wanted to make sure that, um, I, I, I did my best to honor the real life events. Good for you. I'm, that's you. <laughs> impressive that you did that much research without even having the role first. That's that's pretty impressive. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> How did director Sarah Polly guide the cast? Oh, wow. She was um, a great support system, not only during the filming of this process, but from when we got cast. Uh, we had many conversations over email about what I think my character would be like, what her traits are, what her uh, weaknesses are, what her strengths are, what her history was. Um, and she was always supportive and very open and she allowed us to be a part of the conversation, which I've never really had before. I felt very involved in the process of this film. Um, we ended up doing um, a couple of weeks of rehearsal as well on Zoom prior to meeting everyone in person. And a lot of conversations came up in those rehearsals. She would ask us how we felt about things, whether the line was right. And it, it felt like she was taking from our personal experience and kind of shaping the script a little bit at that time. Um, and same when we transitioned into um, the actual set, we did a couple of uh, weeks of rehearsal there and almost performed it like a play. And because we were performing it with care and, and some extra time, again, those conversations would come up and it really felt very collaborative um, and a huge support system from Sarah. I mean, number one, she's a genius, but she's also so um, empathetic and giving the fact that she allowed us in on her masterpiece. And um, she created a very safe space for us to be able to have that communication and also get as vulnerable as we needed to get um, for the film. So working with Sarah, it, is it like, I didn't know dreams came true. I didn't know I could dream like that. But if there was a dream, she made all the dreams come true and, and reset the standards for how I think movies should be filmed. Now you mentioned the set, was it filmed in an actual barn? Kind of. So we had a, a big sound stage built um, in Toronto in this big warehouse and they made it look really cool. It was um, very well done, kind of shell of a barn. And then around the barn, we had a blue screen for them to project anything on it afterwards. But it felt really, really real. Um, but we primarily filmed in there for the most part. And then there was an actual set that we did go to um, a couple hours north of Toronto. 
Um, and it had a whole, like, that's where you see the fields, where you see the other buildings, you see the homes, uh, you see the actual barn. Um, and the barn that they had built in the sound studio was an exact replica of that barn. So when they were able to transition between the two, it looked identical. And I thought that was like, you know, a little bit of movie magic. Sometimes we don't always get to see how it's made behind the scenes. But for me as an actor, I love that stuff. I love seeing how they put it all together and the set design and all that. So it was really, really cool. I was sure you were going to say it was filmed in an actual barn. That was really well done. <laughs> yeah, movie magic. Yeah. Now, when Ocha jumps out of the loft window, was that done in the studio? Yes, actually. So that, again, is a bit of a movie magic. So um, we did have a stunt double for Ocha. And uh, we were able to film it. Well, I should say Sarah and her team, like as if I filmed it. <laughs> but they were able to film it in a way that kind of put it two together. So they had um, the a stunt double run out of the uh, fake barn, and then they had like a police system um, or a mat or something, something safe uh, to have her land on. And they filmed that a couple of times. And then on the flip side of the shot. Um, Kate Hallett, who plays Ocha, they filmed her down in the hay, um, the stack of hay. So, um, again, a little bit of movie magic, magic finagling, but um, it's so cool how they're able to put everything together and make it such a smooth shot. What was it like working with Claire Foy and Rooney Mara? Had you seen them in other movies? Oh, yeah, of course. Who hasn't seen Claire Foy and Rooney Mara? Um, you know, I thought it was going to be intimidating at first, but what I quickly learned is they are the coolest, most down to earth and funniest people I've ever met. And what was really kind of um, lovely for, for me to take out of it is a lot of their parts was my character just watching them. And having that opportunity to just watch them do their thing and being around them all the time, I learned so much. And I'm growing as an actor. Um, you know, I, I take different tools from things that I've learned and apply it to my work. And to be able to see them perform so deeply and vulnerably, vulnerably so quickly, like, I guess that goes to show the kind of space that Sarah created. But it was just the the pure professionalism and openness that really caught me with those guys that encouraged me and kind of motivates me to 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 do better in my own work. So honestly, as an actor, I felt like I was in a master class and I had the best teachers around. And also they're like the most fun people I've ever met. I, you think the laughing is fake in that film, but it's all genuine. Now, who out of the main cast was the most like their character? <laughs> who was out of the main cast was most like our like character you know it's so cute here's a cute story so we have a group chat that we have on our, our phones and so we're always talking um and we're always saying silly things or updating each other on on our lives or what we're doing and just um actually a couple of days ago we realized that judith ivy wasn't on our group chat so um we couldn't we couldn't we thought we were, she was just silent the whole time we didn't realize she just wasn't there so we quickly added her on there and most of our conversations were you know silliness things or teasing each other or you know talking about what we're doing and then all of a sudden Judith I Ivy comes on and she says sends just one nice message to start and she's like I'm baking Christmas cookies and thinking of all of you and we're all then like our emotions are pulled and we're like oh my god and Sarah comments to be like look how more nurturing our conversation just got by adding Judith to this conversation so uh, Judith Ivy and I actually were able to create a really great bond on set um, she's just a lovely human being. And so I would say who's more like their character would probably be her and her kind of like calm, collected, but also like um, maternal and, 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 and loving nature that she has um, leader kind of in a way. And, um, and uh, she was, she's kind of still like that in our group. She kind of oversees us all chuckles every so often at our, our silliness and, and is, is on, is on for the ride. So um I would say definitely Judith Ivy because she's just just lovely. And what did you like or not like about the costumes? <laughs> well, th there's not much to not like. The costumes were actually really, really cool. I mean, Kita Alfred did an amazing job and she did so much research too to make sure that all of the costumes were super, super authentic. Uh, but um, what we really loved is she she did make these 
these great pockets. So um, in, in our undergarments, like under our skirt, we would have like a slip. Um, and there was this little kind of apron she made that we could tie around our waist that would go between the slip and the skirt and, and had a couple pockets in it. So you could put like your COVID mask in there, uh, your phone in there, you know, like just little trinkets. <laughs> I used my little pocket slip so much because I my character had glasses too. So I had a glasses case. I had glasses. I had these pop-on sunglasses that went over my character glasses when we were outside. Like I had a lot of stuff going on. So I had this uh, little apron that I would stuff all my stuff into. Uh, and then as the day went on and I put more things in it, it would slowly like fall down my waist. <laughs> to the floor to keep readjusting it but um that's what i that's like a silly thing that i loved about the costumes is that she's always thinking of us and and making everything easy but number one the costumes were so authentic and beautiful uh and i guess the least favorite thing is they were rayon and polyester so imagine going out in a hot canadian summer um with that baby on uh you sweat through all your layers <laughs> So, I mean, that was probably the worst thing, but it definitely puts into perspective what authentic, you know, Mennonite women go through with all those layers on. I mean, kudos to them. <laughs> and one final question. Did you keep a memento from the set? Oh, yeah. So um, I have a couple of things on my wall. Um, I did get everyone to sign the very front page, the title page of the script. Uh, so I have the, all my cast members signing it for me. It's up on my wall. It just um, represents such a beautiful memory. And also we were given as a gift this um, this cloth picture with the whole world built onto it. And it has all of the barns and the homes and the paths, but they have funny little Easter eggs in them. Like there's a little sign that says COVID testing. And in the back where the cows are, there's a little exclamation mark that says moo. And like around the chickens, it says cluck, cluck. And um, there's one little thing that says um, um, like um, craft services, you know, like funny little Easter eggs. So I ended up framing it because it's just a great picture of the world that we lived in for so many months filming this and it's on my wall. So those are really great mementos um, from the film. And we also have this beautiful book that Rooney Mara made for all of us. It's this bound book where she um, put the whole script in there and then all of Liv McNeil's drawings that she made in the film, she was able to uh, put in the book in various places. So it's just this, it's a beautiful memento from the film. So um, we thank Rooney very much for that thoughtful gift. Those sound like incredible mementos. <laughs> Thanks. I, th I wanna thank you so much for chatting with me today. I wish <laughs> you and the film so much success in the future. Uh, it opens on December 23rd. So I hope anyone who's watching this definitely goes and sees the movie. It's, it's definitely worth it. Oh, thank you so much, Alexandra. I can't tell you uh, how much I appreciate having this chat and thank you so much for supporting our film. Thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel or if you're returning but you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, tap it now plus the notification bell in the top right-hand corner so you make sure you don't miss out on any new celebrity interviews. Also, hit the like button and tell me below in the comments, who's your favorite star? Who would you like to see me interview next? I'd love to hear from you.